kind of a happy hour, pre-happy hour Saturday live. Hey, um, here on Clips and Dip, I am Chuck Buckler, joined by Adam Oslin. Will Updike is unavoidably detained, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, things happened today. So we're going to talk about the Kai Jones signing. I know a very vocal, uh, small minority of people have been clamoring for this. Uh, we're going to talk to Lawrence Frank, fake update on Kawhi. I don't know. Adam, how are you doing on the day that the Clippers signed Kai Jones and waved Josh Primo? A lot of stuff going on today. Uh, <laughs> interested to get into this. Clippers final regular season game in downtown Los Angeles coming up tomorrow uh, against the Houston Rockets. But obviously we know at this point everything's about the Dallas Mavericks in that 4-5 matchup with the Clippers having home court advantage over the Dallas Mavericks. But this was an interesting piece of news coming out with Kai Jones. And yes, there were many people all season long asking for this. And I you know, I think it's fair uh, to uh, I give him a little bit of love because it was mocked and dismissed by many that Kai Jones, come on, what are you guys talking about? And to bring him in right before the playoffs, and he <laughs> is playoff eligible, which was news to me and a little bit surprising. Pretty to sure me. he's playoff eligible, yeah, because he has it. He never played <laughs> with a team, anybody, even though he was picked up on a 10 day by the Philadelphia 76ers, he never played for them, right? So, I guess that's the deciding factor here. But if we're wrong, please correct us, those of you in the chat. But that's the information we've been presented. And so, the timing of it leads to people wondering if he could actually get playoff minutes for this Clippers team <laughs> out of nowhere, which seems wild and <laughs> a little bit of a in case of emergency break glass type player just Absolutely. to have in case and you're good with that obviously Josh Primo was the one waived and apparently it was a contract worked out with Kai Jones uh, a multiple year deal It'll probably be weird incentive like, laden and yeah not guaranteed yeah. like also, I will say I was someone who kind of was like, I don't think we need to sign Kai Jones, but I like this signing a lot more than the Primo signing. It makes a hell of a lot more sense than that did. Um, Jeremy it's a Borman, position of need, right? Yeah. He's a big, versatile, athletic guy. Like, that's what the Clippers need. So it's like, it's more of a long-term play, obviously. But yeah, it's like they needed those three things. Yeah, if you're going to uh, take the risk or bet on a player with a very high ceiling, it makes sense to do it in a position of need where this Clippers team needs to get younger, more athletic, and they need more help in the front court, something we've talked about all season long, and they just happen to be going up against a team that really loaded up in that area in the first round of the playoffs, which I think also plays into people thinking maybe he'll get a look, but – is he going to play tomorrow against the Houston Rockets? Is that possible? Could the deal be is he even, yeah, quick I'm enough? Like, yeah, A, can the deal be done quick enough? We haven't seen any of the – I don't think there's been any contract stuff released yet. All uh, I saw was – that was made official was the Josh Primo news. Yeah. Not the Kai Jones news, correct? Yes, the Clippers did – yeah, they tweeted out a thank you, Josh – Post, so he's officially gone but yeah there hasn't been any contract stuff released um, so a lot of unknowns yeah. here we're jumping on this a little bit early <laughs> but it's a saturday and we do a lot of saturday lives jake here birds. and it's kind of fun what's up jake uh, birds everyone if you're watching buy a jake Burns shirt he makes great clippers merch um someone was asking uh, can you explain Kai Jones and what his archetype? Never heard of him. If you've never heard of him, that's that makes total sense. It's totally fine to have not heard of Kai Jones. Um, he's an incredibly athletic big. He's 6'11". Um, he was the, what was he? Wasn't a lotto pick. He was the 19th pick uh, in the 2021 draft. He's a giant, fast rib runner. Yeah, right. With, like with range at Texas, his sophomore year, he shot 38% from the outside. That hasn't necessarily translated to the NBA at this point. And I don't know how many opportunities he has gotten. 
Uh, and, and by the way, we should probably give the backstory of why he was released. It wasn't to do with his lack of talent. It was issues with people worried about his mental health on social media was something he posted and then calling out teammates on the Charlotte Hornets who uh, have had some issues themselves with just, you know, structure and a real Not foundation a there in Charlotte. <laughs> yeah. So I wouldn't hold that against him too much. And I always am sympathetic for young people making mistakes when they're younger. Obviously, sure. there's some things you can't come back from. This is not that case whatsoever. Uh, and if you watch the interview he did with Sham Sharania when he was picked up by the Philadelphia 76ers, and that link has been going around. I retweeted it at Follow Adam A on X, formerly known as Twitter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was a pretty interesting <laughs> delve into his mindset. And I think it was uh, well articulated his headspace and what he was going through at the time with some deaths in the family and his situation and just some of the issues he's had. Uh, and I don't know. I, I, I root for young guys like this. I, I always do. Yeah. For, because he's still what? 22 years of age. Like at this that. point very young incredibly young yeah he's 22 um and this is somebody yeah. that just has such high upside obviously the 19th pick in the draft a couple of years ago but it's someone that i don't know if if things aren't going well we were talking earlier in the chat about how this could actually affect the clippers playoff run in subway I would assume things would be going pretty bad if a player <laughs> very just picked well. up before the first round started. Yeah, or he's the human victory cigar. <laughs> yeah, he's not going to practice with the team. Like, he's not going to be. Yeah, um, it would be pretty yeah. unexpected to see him play any significant minutes against the Dallas Mavericks or any minutes even whatsoever. Or it could tell you that Ibiza Zubats can, is in foul trouble or can't stay on the floor. Something. Daniel Tyson, Mason Plumley are ineffective. PJ Tucker's ineffective out there. Rest of the five is ineffective. And hey, let's give it a shot now with Kai Jones because uh, it's a desperation move and desperate times call for desperate measures, basically. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think it was Dime who had a funny tweet about how the Clippers are kind of like – reclamation project central like if you look at the guys they've brought in so they are trying this again right bringing in a guy who a lot of other teams gave up on um starman home is asking is he a defender he's shown flashes of good defense again the athletic ability really helps on that end um yeah a lot of the advanced numbers were saying that at, near the end of his time with Charlotte, he was trending upward in that area, yeah. which is not easy to do when you have a bunch of bad defenders so around the you, worst team, you by know. the way. He did <laughs> the potential have, is all there. Yes, the potential is there. So during his 10-day contract with the 76ers, which was his most recent uh, stretch, he spent all of his time with the – excuse me, what team is this? Uh I don't know, a G League team. I can't see the name right now. Um, it's the G League website is so bad. Uh, sorry, the Delaware Blue Coats. He played two games for the Delaware Blue Coats. I'm very sorry to any Blue Coats fans in the chat for forgetting the name. Um, but he had two games. He played. He played 24 minutes. He didn't take a three. Um, he put up 11 points. So like, yeah, I don't know. There's there's nothing to really take from there. <laughs> like, yeah, um, but he, he got some run. Like, or sorry, he took uh, he took one three point attempt. He missed it. He averaged seven boards. He was minus one. Um, yeah, I don't know. The comp, I would say, I, I don't know. One guy that he reminded me of a little bit, and just watching some of the highlights and him getting out in transition a little bit, but also <laughs> being a rim runner. <laughs> Thank you, doing nothing. <laughs> would be someone like uh, Willie Cauley Stein who never reached his hey, full potential in the yeah. league, but he was a high draft pick by what, the Sacramento Kings a few years back. Somebody Rogers like that body right type here. too. Yeah. Uh, Very raw talent, athletic guy. Um, Commissioner Harris is asking, uh, does he have a jumper? He did in college ish. 
Yeah, I'm not sure that part of his game has really been fleshed out at the NBA level at this point. Obviously, how many people that aren't Charlotte Hornets fans have watched a ton of games by the Hornets the last couple of seasons? Yeah, I bet there's going to be some people in our YouTube comments who are going to send us some some Kai Jones uh, highlights. He's been an obsession for some fans, which is also very funny. So I guess I'm happy for those people. Um, They're being rewarded right now. I mean, I, I... I don't mind when you are missing in the draft and everybody misses. And I think it's over. I think it's overblown a little bit. When you look at two guys in the rotation right now, they're going to get minutes in the playoffs and Terrence Mann and an undrafted player and mirror coffee that are on a team trying to get a championship. Uh, I'm not going to say, you know, it it hasn't been perfect. It hasn't been uh, a disaster though, either (laughs) when you take into account guys like that. But every team, when you get into the nitty gritty, if you go back, and I've done this many times to point out how flawed uh, how analysts times? are coming into the draft, Jay Billis and these guys, and everybody talking about when you're watching the first round of a draft, everybody basically being drafted is is the, has the potential of being an all star, and it's <laughs> <Right>. ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's a good point. I went back over a ten year period to see how many guys actually were, and I think in the first. 10 picks, you had about a 25% chance of getting an all-star over a 10-year period. So it's very difficult, imperfect science, trying to grade guys, trying to scout them, uh, because there's also attitude issues also, and just work ethic, and all these things come into play, and you're dealing with young men. Um, So it's just never easy. So I, I don't think, I think it's a little bit overblown when it comes to people going after the Clippers front office in poor drafts. But well, way to mitigate that would be to bring in some of these guys like Bones Highland, who allegedly had an yeah. attitude issue going on with the Denver Nuggets. High potential. You're seeing it the last couple of games. We saw it at the end of last season, too. We saw it at the start of this season. And bring in some of those guys and see if a change of scenery and a better culture can make a big difference for them. And I'm guessing just like when... They did a, the they did a, their due diligence with Josh Primo and talked about you know they were monitoring that was also the situation. A weird signing. That was a bad sure, signing. but they said they were monitoring the situation for some time. Yeah, and I'm guessing it's the same thing with Kai Jones. Should he officially sure. become a member of the Los Angeles Clippers? In that interview right. with Sham Sharania, he was talking about going through therapy and working through some of the issues going on. So. I'm guessing they're they're checking Shout a lot of Roger. boxes with him. Shout out Roger for having watched lots of Hornets games in the last two years. Don't know why. Uh, but no, I, you're totally right. This is a team that needs to find guys the way they have been finding them, which is through trades and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. I'm not sure. I don't know. It, it's, I hope he plays well. I hope he meshes with the team. Um <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't, it's a long term play, right? He's gonna his his last stint was in the G League, so I have to imagine that he might, you know, he's gonna be on the summer league team, all that stuff. Like he's probably gonna show out in summer league because really athletic guys tend to do that. Uh, I remember they didn't go after Robert Williams; they brought him in, um, for a workout when he was coming out of college. And I really liked him. I was high on him. Obviously, his career has been derailed because of knee injuries, not because right. he didn't have the talent, not because he wasn't very useful in Boston when he was healthy. And the Clippers missed on that guy. And I think they're still trying to find him. We saw Fiondo Cabangeli get brought in, Musa Diabate, <sighs> other big men. They're trying to find yeah, you know, an true. athletic big man. Yeah. They're trying to find somebody <laughs> that can help out in that area. And this is the next, I guess, project in this way with a super high ceiling, obviously. And I don't know. I'm, I'm excited about it. Yeah, this is a ex Mago's asking because, again, another guy they just drafted, Musa. Uh, he said, who are we likely keeping moving forward, Kai Jones or Musa? Probably both. It's not like they're, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Probably both. Musa's had some injury uh, bad luck, which sucks. He had the hand. He broke his hand, which is brutal. Uh, Musa's more yeah. motor than just having insane athleticism like Kai Jones. That would be the difference, I would say, between those two. 
Uh, and Kai Jones is bigger, taller, longer, stronger. Uh, he is the prototypical type of rim runner you're looking for in this league. Yeah. Uh, William Blast was a fair point. That green hair he has is hideous. Not my favorite either, William Blast. I think he um, shaved it. <laughs> oh, that's good. Okay, good. Um, yeah, and again, you know, all the Kai Jones fans, he's here. Uh, don't get your hopes up too high for playoff minutes. Again, as Adam so eloquently put, things are probably going very poorly or very well. Uh, like he's not going to have pro- – we'll see. Um, yeah. Anything else? Like, I mean, we're excited. It's good. He gets another chance. He gets to be with a way better organization. Uh I, yeah. I just, yeah, I like the opportunity for this Clippers organization to have someone with that much raw talent and to see what they can do with it. Yeah. That's what excites me about this because it's been, uh, some people, I, I still feel like, and I post it every once in a while, whenever they're playing the Miami Heat, I say, what about Clippers culture? What about the guys that they have brought in that were said to be done or somebody like Bones Highlands who wasn't fitting in with the Denver Nuggets and apparently getting into it with Jamal Murray. And now you can make the argument that he was still sent home right before the All-Star break. But <laughs> you see him on the bench, and he seems to be one of the guys. He's cheering everybody on, and they're doing the same for him the last couple of games since he's gotten this opportunity once again at the end of the year. So I, I think it comes with the territory of just you have to take some big swings here and there. You do in this league. Uh, obviously, yeah. they this passed isn't even on... that big of a swing. I feel like, right? Like we cut a guy, right? Who wasn't playing. It's low risk. Yeah, it's low, it's incredibly low risk. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see how it develops here. But for those thinking that because they're taking on the Dallas Mavericks, that means he's going to be getting run in a first round series, that seems like a long shot at this point. I think the timing of it. <laughs> Makes you think that could be a it's possibility, very funny. yeah. But it could just be if they don't pick him up, somebody else will, and they've been scouting him and monitoring the situation, and they want to make sure they snag him. And it just happened to be right before they take on a team with a bunch of rim runners themselves in the first round. <laughs> yeah, uh, Race Marlin uh, again, one of the be- better names we get in the chat said, "How many years was the deal unclear yet? No, it's no, not official. It's not official yet, so we don't really have." Uh, yeah, any of uh, yeah, again, official we're going players. off reporting from Woj Law Murray. Law had it first, yeah, Law had it first of the athletic. Uh, and the only thing that's been made official is Josh Primo was waived, yes, yeah, deciding that never made sense. Um, so yeah, that's kind of I feel like all we can really say about Kai. Hope it goes well. Uh, we'll see what happens for those of you who saw, uh, we got to talk the uh, the Lawrence Frank update yeah on Kawhi. uh he was on the broadcast which he hasn't been on the broadcast in a while i like when lawrence uh is on the broadcast not a lot of gms do that which i do i do appreciate um from mr frank he said uh in relation to Kawhi, he said with Kawhi, he's dealing with inflammation it's no secret he's had a couple surgeries to that knee it's not uncommon over the course of it where you deal with inflammation with inflammation, it limits your ability to make some natural basketball moves. So he's working his tail off. The staff is working their tail off to try to help with the inflammation. He said inflammation a lot. And that's what it that's was what listed as <laughs> after it started as right knee soreness. And then you have to be more specific with it right. after a couple of games. So we've discussed it. We talked about it last night. We did a little clips and double dip on Clippers talk. That quote coming out from Lawrence Frank. Look, unfortunately for those that were just hoping this was rest and load management, that doesn't seem to be it at this point, guys. It seems like something is going on. To what extent? I don't know. Yeah. Thank you. I I, I think (laughs) it comes down to, you know, when – and there was a report out there from Tomer Azarli that he did get the MRI and there was nothing significant found, which good news. Tomer Azarley of Clutch Points, by the way. Shout out, Tomer. I would say there's a lot of unknowns and even maybe Kawhi Leonard at this point. You know, it's a wait and see type of approach with how he responds to treatment. And they're working around the clock. Uh, He was at at least two of their shoot-arounds now suited up. 
But somebody was taking a lot out of that and extrapolating, well, then he's okay. It's just load management. Well, no, a shoot around is shoot around. It's not five on five. Uh, it's definitely not intense playoff basketball, which is what will really ultimately, hopefully, he'll have a chance to test it out. And, and that's the one thing I keep thinking about with this injury. Like, I, I still believe uh, – and we heard from Coach Lou last night, too. He was pressed on this by Brad Turner of the L.A. Times. And they're basically saying, yeah, hopefully he's available to go for game one. But they were non-committal on saying he's for sure playing in game one. So it could come down to getting that inflammation down with still a week or so left before game one against the Dallas Mavericks at Crypto. And everybody has to just wait and see how his right knee responds because the part – that stuck out to me with Lawrence Frank and what I brought up immediately was it's his right knee. That's right. where the ACL was. Right. That's where the meniscus injury was. His right leg was where the tendinopathy was with the San Antonio Spurs. So yes. And I wasn't trying to panic anyone when we first <laughs> talked about this, but I was like, yeah, I'm concerned Something to think about it's, it's Kawhi. Valid. Yeah. <laughs> it's that knee. How can I not be concerned about it? Of course. Hopefully it doesn't amount to much and maybe yeah. the timing actually works out to have it now instead of in the middle of a playoff series to where he would have gotten three weeks off between his last game played in Charlotte, coincidentally, since we've been talking about Kai Jones Connected to play the dots in game one. <laughs> yeah, I'm Charlie Day now. I got the FBI <laughs> string. <laughs> uh, but yeah, hopefully – it all turns out that Kawhi Leonard just needed some rest there. And it was the most games he had played since the 2016, 2017 season. He got to 68 games in the regular season and that's all it was, but we don't know. And I feel like with everyone saying, well, they're not being transparent enough. Well, maybe it's because they don't know how he's going to respond either. His, he doesn't know. It, it all comes down to just how, things go in the rehab or whatever's happening right now maintenance yeah i did like he was happy and being fun on the bench yeah. yesterday that feels good i tweeted that out i was like i'm taking that as a good sign i'm just floating in the sea of we don't really know but he looked happy on the bench so it's better than what we saw with him with the torn acl in 2021 way up in the stands you know right. obviously laboring he was standing up uh i'm I don't know. I don't want to take too much away from things like that, but I guess we got to hope for the best. And the one thing I kept thinking about last night after we talked, Chuck, was as much as I have said, I think I'd rather see the Pelicans in the first round over the Dallas Mavericks, and I've been in the minority They're there. They're crazy, though. Yeah, uh, they had that. I watched the game on TNT Thursday against the Sacramento Kings, um, but I think – if, and it's a big if, they don't have Kawhi for some games of the series against the Dallas Mavericks, Dallas would be a better matchup for the Clippers to get by yeah. against them. Be just because as good as their defense has been as of late, we talk about pace, and you brought up they've been eighth in pace since the All-Star game. Yeah, And the Clippers are bottom 10 in pace and consistently have been really in the 2-1-3 era, but all season long for the most part, as you would expect. In the playoffs, a slower uh, pace favors a slower, more methodical team. Possessions are, uh, of course, even more important. And playing a little bit slower and taking care of the basketball, yeah. Possessions the intentionality the out there is different. So – I'm thinking about a team that is going to be in their half court defense much more. Yep. You would expect the Clippers to be where they're better, where they're hopefully they're getting back. <laughs> and then on the offensive end, you know, even if Kawhi is not there, they have James Harden, they have Russell Westbrook, and we're still hoping everything's fine and Kawhi is there. And if I had to guess, and it would just be a guess, he will be there for game one. Yeah. But. I still think they might have enough firepower to at least compete against Dallas. It's going to be tough to say, yeah, they can win the series against Dallas without Kawhi Leonard because of how good he had to be in 2021 just for them to win in seven. But I think they can be competitive. And if you're competitive enough, you got a shot. And you got the home crowd. That's the first time we're going to have an actual home crowd for Clippers Mavs. 
which I I know I've harped about. I've talked about a lot, but I'm very excited to see what Clippers fans do for game one on Saturday. Um, yeah, I think that, I mean, no Kawhi, if for whatever reason. Worst case on wood, situation. Play Worst case first scenario. Game. Yes. Um, which we I, still expect him to. Yeah, I think, yeah, they could be competitive. It's obviously a lot harder. You have a guy who can put up 45 on one end and play effective defense late on the other. So Because yeah. Dallas has likely been getting by collectively by playing together five guys on a string on defense. Because you look at the individual personnel and they're starting five with Derek, or excuse me, Derek Jones Jr. out there with P.J. Washington, with Kyrie Irving, Daniel Gafford and Luka Doncic. The Clippers have guys to go at them with. They have guys you can match up on. There are mismatches that Coach Lou, who's already been preparing for this going back a couple of days now when he had that quote at the very end of his press conference, which was pretty gangster. He's like, I already have. <laughs> he, <laughs> he was, he was asked by Law yeah. Murray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they got up and left. Like there are holes defensively on this team individually with the Dallas Mavericks and what you can get away with during the regular season when a team may have a day or two at most to prepare for you is very different than when you have two weeks almost to prepare for this Dallas Mavericks team since it's pretty much been in the works now or they've been in that five spot for some time. So I do think the Clippers firepower, especially because of what we saw last night from James Harden. I thought there were some really encouraging signs. We talked about this also post game, but the movement from James Harden, I'm very much uh, less concerned about James Harden now after what we've seen last night and going back over the last week, even going back to that game against Denver, where I think he was six for 23. Yeah. I was encouraged by the fact that he got up 23 shots, that he was that aggressive exactly. out there. And That's been the so issue. So many of those threes were just like spinning out, rimming out, and he was just kind of, I don't know, uh, sighting the scope a little bit, zeroing in a little <laughs> yeah, bit tweaking, because yeah. the three started to drop after that for him in the next couple of ball games. I just like the fact that he was turning the corner last night yeah. the way he was in that first quarter. It was him with a blow by going to his left with a kick out to Terrence Mann and then another blow by where he got the lefty layup to go. James Harden looks good. Like that burst, seeing that in person last night, he was moving very quickly. And yeah, he's another guy who's had, I totally agree, he's been moving quickly. It's something the Clippers need. Um, he's had the foot inflammation thing, which Ty Lu mentioned shouldn't be an issue, or I believe that was the quote. Uh, going into the playoffs. I think that was Ty kind of being coy and kind of a dick, if that makes sense. Like a coach, like how a coach is a dick. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, he He's played he, from dealing with so many questions over and over again. Honestly, I think that's what that response specifically was for sure. He's exhausted by this stuff. He doesn't, no coach wants to talk about this stuff. Uh, but I don't, I'm not super worried about the foot inflammation. Like you said, mostly from what we saw last night. Uh, but no one's going to play tomorrow. So it was great. I hope no one plays tomorrow. Uh, so it was great to see the burst. Him and Zoo looked great. They look like their chemistry is yeah. is right there, which Zoo is going to be such a huge. We're going to talk about this more in depth next week. Ooh. But Zoo being able to stay on the court is going to be very important for the Clippers. Um, That's probably my biggest X factor. Like, if yeah. Zoo can stay on the court. Oh, we just got the uh, injury report. Ooh, what do we got, Live. Chuck? That's fun. <laughs> Here's out Kawhi Leonard, right knee inflammation, questionable James Harden, right foot inflammation. That's the end of the report. Yeah. Well, we're not likely to see anybody when it comes to the starters tomorrow against the Houston Rockets because. Or we'll see them for like eight. Like we're going to see them for like yeah. the first whistle or so. Like it's going to be weird. Um, okay, those eight minutes from Paul George, though, <laughs> he was like a plus yeah. 11. He had 10 points quickly against Utah. They looked the part against a lesser team last night against Utah when they actually were playing their guys to start off the ball game. They didn't play yeah. down to their competition. They looked dominant, uh, and they were playing fast out there. So it looked like a team that's focused and ready and knows what's ahead. And they have really overall since Coach Lou called him out for being soft. Hey, Since sometimes that. you got to press that button. Um, X Mongo Project asking Paul George playing maybe for 
10 seconds or something. I like hope nothing. not. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't want to. Doing because, nothing. This is doing nothing's been very funny in the chat. He said PG needs to build chemistry with Kai. <laughs> um, everyone's yeah. asking about Kai. There's been no contract details. We have. I don't. We don't know it's if the contract official. can get signed in tw eight hours <laughs> or something like that. No idea if Kai Jones is going to play. Probably not. Would be our guess. Yeah, at this point, sorry, I guess he's not officially signed. I'm not going to bet on him being able to play tomorrow. My logic with PG and why I think he shouldn't play or any of the stars is if you're playing him is to keep a rhythm, right? To keep a good lather out there, to keep him warm, to keep the timing there. Is that lather? really going to hold up? I don't know. It was a... It was a term used by my friend Kevin Kennedy, a uh, former MLB manager who called games for the Dodgers for years. And he would That's talk really about funny. that that with pitchers, like working up a good lather, you know, getting a rhythm, getting warmed up. And the thing is, can he really hold that over five or six days off anyways? So what's the point? Like that's not going to have carryover from Sunday to next Saturday or Sunday, even if he does play five to 10 minutes tomorrow against the Houston Rockets. I don't see a need for that. Uh, unbiased clip fans asking Chuck, is Kai going to be the starting center for the playoffs? Yes. Only for the Western conference finals though. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> um, yeah. Tomorrow's going to be weird. I don't really know what, it's Steve Balber bobblehead day for those of you who would like a bobblehead of a billionaire uh, in your office or home. Uh, I don't know what to expect. Are the Rockets going to be playing anybody? Do they have anything to play for? No, they don't. Unless like, e has got a wild hair. Like, I don't. Just to be a prick. It's <laughs> just like. Just to. Everyone's I, playing. <laughs> it's their new culture and identity. We're going hard all the time. Like, he's the new Tom Thibodeau. Ugh. Yeah, they're five games. Yeah, they don't have it. Yeah. Damn. I'd love to see Jalen Green just because his progress over the last couple of months has been interesting. Yeah. And selfishly, I did say the Detroit Pistons should take him over Cade. But uh <laughs> you, need that, whatever. you need those the receipts to yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. yeah, what uh I don't know what do we yeah there, I don't know there's not much to talk about tomorrow. Um, Star what, Man what's, with a great prediction. Clips and I agree. Star Man clips in three. It's gonna <laughs> let's, take three. Let's fucking go. <laughs> That's gonna upset some Mavericks fans that end up yeah. watching this. No <laughs> doubt. Welcome. Also, we should say there was a Mavs fan in the chat who gave us a super chat. Thank you uh, to all the Mavs fans. Hello, welcome to Clips and Dip. Usually, Will Updike is with us. We cover the Clippers. Uh, we don't mind your city. We like it more than Phoenix, the city. The team is going to be a bloodbath, but hey, yeah, this will be fun, I guess. Um, Should we already, give people already yelling at you in the chat <laughs> about the cutting of Have you watched both That's guys so far? Funny. Who has the higher ceiling? I think it's Jalen Green. But um, sore losers gaming on the Zubak train. Which is good to see. Should we give him a little preview nugget just talking about Zubots in this matchup and how Yeah, let's do it. I mean, yeah, if, if people don't some people don't I mean Carl Tart, friend of the show, famously. Even uh, on the, the broad uh, Carl Tart, not the biggest beats Zubots fan, <laughs> but he's gonna have to get behind him for this one. <laughs> yeah, we need the support. <laughs> but even during the radio broadcast last last night, I, between plays at times, Carlo and I are already previewing the series against the Dallas Mavericks because what happens tomorrow is inconsequential against the Houston Rockets. And that's a good thing. The Clippers have the four spot wrapped up so we can start to get into it more, but we talked about this in our preview to the preview. Uh, <laughs> Avica Zubas to me is so important this time around because they don't have the pieces they did in past years against the Dallas Mavericks to right. play small and to thrive playing small, big with that small wing ball stop. Lineup with that wing stop yeah. mentality. Now they still have Kawhi and Paul George. So you can do some of it, but to act like a guy like Nicholas Batum is on this team with the versatility that he has defensively and the switchability that he has, you know, you had to get to get when it came to give to get when it came to bringing in James Harden. I'm sure that was the guy they were most reluctant on giving up in that trade. And he's gotten, you know, minutes here and there and could be very valuable for them in the playoffs. But 
they just don't have the small ball lineup that they used to. Now, if they go P.J. Tucker at the five, Kawhi Leonard at the four, Paul George at the three, with some combination of James Harden next to Terrence Mann or Amir Coffey, there's still something there. Yeah. But I worry about P.J. Tucker isn't a high flyer. How are you going to contest those lobs that are going up to Gafford <laughs> Not and P.J. Washington? Is a res very respectable way to say what oh, P.J. Tucker the, is. The Tuck Wagon Brigade will be yeah. respectful. The here. Tuck Wagon stays on the ground. That thing is not. That thing is not built for. <laughs> For air travel <laughs> or anything like that. Uh, so to me, Avica Zubats is integral to what is going to play out in this series. If he yeah. is able to stay on the court, and if you're raising an eyebrow to that statement, well, what the Dallas Mavericks would do against him in 2020 and 2021 was put him in actions with Luka Doncic and get the switch. He would pull him out to the perimeter, and therefore you're negating what Avica Zubas can do with your rim protection as he is an elite rim protector. If he's out there guarding Luka Doncic, he's not helping you in that area, which is really going to hurt you this time around because of the front court of the Dallas Mavericks and the makeover they've had. I'm hoping they just say, you know what? They're going for that switch. We're uh, gonna stay with Luca. We're not. We're not gonna no fall for it. We're not gonna fall for the bait and not switch when Luca tries that against Avisa Zubats and just keep him in drop. I, Which I, will be I hard, don't know. That will be difficult because they've been switching all year. They switch everything. Uh, but that's where we've seen kind of the slippage in some of the defenses. Guys switching and then not, you know, exactly maybe engaging as they should. So I agree, but it, it might take. Some adjustment. We've seen this team go down before. I, I'd rather hours. live with a guy having to fight through Luca's man, having to fight through that screen and Luca getting an open look for a three for a half a second because of that. than you putting a Vita Zubats on him, which makes him somehow even more confident, even when it's good defense by a Vita Zubats. It, it, it's like he, I don't know if I said this on the last show, but it, it's almost like, it's the ladder drill or something <laughs> for Luka yeah. Doncic, and he knows how to get the perfect arc over a seven-one guy in a Vita Zubats. It just works out. It's right in his wheelhouse when he's going up against someone like that. Maybe it's just because of early success early in his career against a Vita Zubats, and he's never forgotten about that. So he's just comfortable against him. It is, I, I'm not gonna say it's fluky. It's Luka. But it is a really weird phenomenon where you could play great defense with a seven footer on him with his hand up, and, and Luca knocks him down at like a seventy five percent clip. Yeah. You're just like whatever. You have it is good deep. Like what shot do you want him to take? <laughs> like, yeah, uh, X, X and that's why they lived with it for so long. They kept trying it. Like this makes sense on our side, <laughs> but he's killing him for whatever reason. And it's the other guys that we have to worry about too, right? Luca can score his. It's going to be kind of the that's what you know a lot of people want the clippers to do is let luca score don't let him get into that 15 assist range cuz then you're getting into a a world where other guys are getting open shots and that is where you get in trouble when he gets like the meaty triple double um ex mongo saying luca versus zoo or luca versus harden it's i mean i don't think harden's going to be put on luca i don't think no, but, but that will be the other new wrinkle to this series yeah. where he hunts that a mismatch. Great, great question. Because what was the starting five in 2021? It was Kawhi. It was PG. <laughs> it was Patrick Beverly eventually got benched. <clears throat> it was Marcus Morris. So Kawhi, PG, Marcus Morris, Avita Zubats were definitely out there. There was four. And then the fifth eventually, I think, turned into Reggie Jackson Yeah, and Rondo. They tried. Rondo had a couple of solid games against the Dallas Mavericks before things fell apart. Boy, sucked. <laughs> I think maybe the game four. But there's one more guy to hunt for Luka outside of just Avita Zubats and pulling him out to the perimeter. It's James Harden on the perimeter. Now, James Harden in the post, we don't mind that matchup. I Even love against Luka. James Harden. Not, maybe not love, but yeah, that's, that's where his strength is. It's been an underrated part of his game. Um... Yeah. But that is a flaw on this Clippers roster that everybody knew was going to be there. 
but you're hoping their offense is so juiced up on the other end, it makes up for the fact that their teams are going to hunt James Harden defensively. And maybe he rises to the challenge and plays some of that defense we saw early on this season as a member of the Clippers, where I thought for sure that's solid enough right there where you can easily get by having James Harden on the court for 40 minutes in a playoff game. Yeah. Yeah. (coughs) Excuse me. Yeah, we saw flashes of it. Um, And it's not like he's not used to being hunted in the playoffs either. It's been happening his entire career, and yet somehow, you know, he's been in some uh, pretty big playoff games and deep into the playoffs anyways. And it's going to be interesting what the late game defense looks like too, right? Like what we start with is maybe not what we're going to finish with when it comes to late game defense against Luka. That's when you want to see, you know, Kawhi, something like that, taking on um, Luka late in those situations. So, oof, a lot of stuff for Tyloo to figure out. Oh, yeah. But there's no one more equipped to do so. I And that is one of the – that gives me more confidence than many things in this series, regardless of who is available for the Clippers. Ty Lu, You guys talked about Ty Lu versus Jason Kidd being a mismatch. <laughs> Let's hope it plays out that way. But what I hope is, in order to keep Avica Zubats on the floor, because Ty does have a tendency to want to go small, when things are failing, he reverts back to that. He does. My hope is that they are getting Avica Zubats involved. Because Gafford, P.J. Washington, and Lively, they're not big bigs. They're athletic bigs. Let Zubats go to work against them. Stay believing in Avisa Zubats because those are taxing physical plays as well. Not just with trying to get those guys maybe in foul trouble, but just he's leaning on guys then. When he gets touches in the post, you know it can compromise your defense because of how big he is if he's gotten a couple to go already. But also, they're just physical plays out there. But I think if he's if he's bringing offense on one end and showing his effectiveness there, there's a better chance that Coach Lou will not try to go away from him. Yeah, he needs to earn that trust, which is one of the more frustrating things, I think, with how I love what Ty Lue does for the most part. But one of the things I don't like is how Zoo has such a short leash with some of that stuff. How it kind of feels Especially like at this a- point. Yeah, especially at this point. It kind of feels like he has to earn trust almost every game or something like that, which is kind of frustrating. Um, Jimmy G asking, what do you think about the Mavs bench? Um, This has been a a large talking point for Clips fans about how our bench is uh, better. I think maybe the top half is, but it gets a little murky, right? Like. Not, and I don't half think, is being generous if we're talking like four bench guys. Well, um, a lot of that's going to depend on Russ and his abilities in this series. And I do think it's a good Russ matchup again. for him. Yeah. yeah. Russ is hot and cold often. He can be inconsistent, uh, high variance player, volatile out there. He can, you know, win you a game in the span of a couple of minutes. He can just be a force of nature and take over, or he can be a little bit erratic and out of control. Yeah. We've seen that throughout his entire career, but it seems like it's even more polarizing as he's gotten older, which rush you're going to get. It could swing oh, one the way variances. or the other. Yeah, in game, that could happen. Because, yeah, the it's a little harder with, with the age. Someone um, came after me in the comments after our last show saying, oh, Russ on Luca, Russ on Kyrie, good luck with that. Okay, bet. Also, if we know Luca's going to get his. This isn't. Yeah, we're, not, like, we're not trying to pretend the man is going to be shut down. <laughs> we're, we're talking about making things as hard as possible. It's like when they went up against Jokic in the bubble, and the difference of I heard people say, "Well, he's going to kill everyone." So what does it matter? And it's like, well, there's a difference between him shooting 75% from the floor against Montrez Harrell and 55% from the floor against Avita Zubats. Right. All you're trying to do is get a few more misses and a few possessions that falter for the Dallas Mavericks. And I do think Russell Westbrook engaged defensively can be a disruptor for Luka and Kyrie at times. I yes. do like that switchability there. And him in the passing lanes. We've seen him be a little more active in the passing lanes as the season's close, which is nice. You don't want him to gamble too much, but he has, but he's making the good decisions. He can get out and transition and hopefully finish at the rim, which is another thing, but we'll talk about that later. This is an interesting comment from S, the last one that was just put up there, Yeah, Charles, because one thing, when they won in Dallas earlier this season, remember these teams haven't played in the new year in 2024. 
I wish, I do really wish, A, from a basketball perspective, I wish we could see uh, the Clippers play this team post-deadline. And just it would be kind of nice to really actually see the matchups post-deadline. I just wish that would have happened. It's um, funny because all the familiarity with Luka and even Kyrie Irving because Coach Lou coached him in Cleveland, obviously, and how well you know those two players. But there's all these other unknowns and right. factors now with the Dallas Mavericks. Totally. And so there's some fear of the unknown. But – I believe it was the game without Paul George where Kawhi Leonard had that spin move. He blew by Derek Jones for the baseline, yeah, dunk, but he had the spin move about. on Grant yeah. Williams. So again, a guy who's not even there anymore. At the end of that game, Russ was on the floor. Is either that or the other game in Dallas? And he was saying, go at him. He was screaming, go <laughs> at Luka. That's the dog I want to see out of Russell Westbrook in this series. So yes, you do need to attack Luka Doncic. Yeah. That is that is the biggest central point or would be my number one key to winning this series, attacking Luka and Kyrie and taking something out of their legs. So you beat them up on the defensive end, it takes something out of them on the offensive side. Yeah, 100%. You got to put them in actions and things like that. Um, Jay reminding people that Terrence Mann and Amir Coffey are also on the team. They stack up. That They're playing. They're doing. The Clippers are doing the thing. I tweeted this out where when they were 26 and five and all that, um, every bench guy was basically playing like plus 15% in terms of their usual ability, right? Like they were playing that slight level over. We're kind of getting back to that. That's how some of, that's how the fringe, not fringe, that feels disrespectful, but you know what I mean? Like that's guys who aren't the major stars are playing a little bit better right now. The Mavs bench is you know, it's, it's even, right? Like, they don't have a bunch of holes. It's not like Denver. They have a better bench than Denver. Their uh, guys have been but, playing well, though, too. Exum's been right. really good. He's having kind of, you know, he was, I think it was the sixth pick in the draft. I'm just glad to see him, you know, finally kind of find his footing at an ACL tear. Those are the guys oh, I, I usually root for. I forgot he had the ACL tear. That's yeah. Uh, but he and Tim Hardaway Jr., Obviously, coming off the bench, those are tough matchups. Those are good bench players for them. And they are also trending in the right direction like a lot of the Clippers bench players right now. Yeah, this is going to be a day of war. Uh, it's a war in the comment section already, which I hope I wish wish everyone good luck in that. Uh, I don't like the revisionist history from Maz fans now, or at least the ones who are coming at me. I posted the... Uh, uh, I think his name was Gamble or something like that in the Dark Knight. The uh, the guy is saying, "Enough from the clown." Yeah, and I was like, "Enough from the Lucas stands." I did that meme the other day because Lucas stands are like, you know, Luca didn't have any help in 2021. It was like, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Chris Porzingis played in all those games. He may have not liked his role, but he was out he there. He hated his life. <laughs> and you had role players. That started off that series in the first three games shooting 60% from three. I literally think when you combine percentages, Tim Hardaway, Dorian Finney-Smith, Jalen Brunson, uh, Maxi Kleba were out there shooting like 60% from three in the first three games of the series. It's Don't insane. tell me Luka didn't have any help and that it's not a, it's not a fair. Because I was saying Kawhi Leonard was better in both of those first round series. He was. That's why the they, Clippers won. Yeah. That's the Clippers are gonna need Kawhi to be better than Luca to win this series. Kawhi shot 60% while getting 30 points per game in that seven game series in 2021, something that had not been done prior to Shaq doing it in the 2000 NBA finals against the Indiana Pacers. Shaq's average distance per shot attempt was four feet. Kawhi's was about 14 feet. Don't tell me he wasn't the better player, especially when you know you add in that other side of basketball defense. <laughs> you can, you can say he had the better team and was also the better player at the same time. Two-way players also are held up to an annoyingly higher standard, I think, than players who are very good at offense and don't play a lot of defense because they expect Kawhi's expect he can be very much when he's locked in. I think someone said in the chat, he's the best player on the court, but if he's just okay at defense, but still better, you know, than the average guy, I feel like that's a knock. They, they expect elite on both ends at all times, which is so much harder than just doing one, just doing one thing. elite. Well, if and also you can be doing your job to the best of your abilities and covering your bases as well as you can defensively and somebody else has a blown assignment 
and you're on the floor and it hurts your defensive rating. Like def right. defensive analytics stuff has been very tough to keep track of because it's hard to stat defense. even more specifically. <laughs> it's, it's a team game already defensively is such playing great defense. It takes an entire team to be together right. and talking and communicating, which we got to hope the Clippers are after this second half of basketball that we've seen. Um, I think that about wraps it up. I'm good. Are we have a uh, thanks everyone for hanging out. If you're new, we are clips and dip. Will Updike is usually with us. We talk about the Clippers three times a week or so. And we're also going to be doing a double dip. Adam, you want to tell these fine people what a double dip is? Yeah, that's on Clippers Talk, your Clippers official post game show, where I take calls like it will be tomorrow in their final regular season game at Crypto.com Arena, formerly Staples Center, in downtown Los Angeles, basically. Where they're taking on the Houston Rockets and post game, we'll have it for you on the Patriot AM 11. 50 when the Dodgers are on AM 570 Clippers are on the Patriot AM 1150, but take callers and also have guests on like Chuck Moffler, like will update, will update like Carl Tart. Oh who yeah. Came on with me recently. So if you guys want to check it out, that's also a podcast Clippers talk. And then we take that section of the show and put it up on clips and dip as well. We do. It's going to be fun. We should maybe have Carl on the Tuesday episode. We're going to do a couple episodes next week leading up to game one. One's going to be in depth. That one's going to come out on Thursday. Uh, it's going to be, let's get, let's get locked in this week. Everyone, everyone just do everything you normally do just a little tighter. You know, let's, let's all stay locked in and get ready for this bloodbath. You can find us. Uh, if you're not subscribed, check us out on YouTube at Clippers podcast. Find us on Twitter at Clippers pod. Adam is follow Adam a over on X, formerly known as Twitter. I am at Chuck Mockler, and Will is at Will Updike. We hope everyone has a great rest of your weekend, and we're supposed to get some rain, so 